Praise be Jesus and Mary. Today's responsorial psalm was taken from Psalm 18. It read, In my distress I called upon the Lord, and he heard my voice, was the refrain. Distress is associated, of course, with the emotion of fear, which St. Thomas numbers among the 11 passions of the soul, being a passion or an emotion. Fear is morally neutral, so it's neither good nor bad in and of itself, and it needs to be controlled by reason. Fear can be normal, it can be abnormal, it can be rational and also irrational as well. So the feeling of fear is one thing. Uh, what I do with that fear, what I do with that feeling is actually what matters. St. Paul says that as Christians, we have the mind of Christ. He says in 1 Corinthians 2, 16, and he also exhorts us in 2 Corinthians 10, 5, to take every thought captive in obedience to Christ. So when the emotion of fear gets triggered inside of me, I need to stop and turn on that gift of reason that the Lord gave me and evaluate. What am I to do with this fear? It's normal to be fearful in certain situations, but to live in a state of fear is different. That's not from God. And we've mentioned that in other reflections, if I'm not mistaken. Um, the psalmist says when fear or distress are knocking at the door or if they've already got a hold on us, the Lord wants us to call upon him. In my distress, I called upon the Lord and he heard my voice was the verse today, Psalm 18, verse 6. And that's a recurring theme in the book of Psalms in general. For example, Psalm 56, verse 3 says, When I am afraid, I will put my trust in you, speaking to the Lord. Psalm 46, verse 1 says, God is for us a refuge and strength, a helper close at hand in time of distress. And in Psalm 50, verse 15, the Lord says explicitly, he says, call upon me in the day of distress. I will rescue you and you shall glorify me. We know that our Lord says in the gospel, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. You know, he says that in Matthew 6, 21. Sometimes uh, I think, believe it or not, our fears are based on the fact that what we treasure is not the treasure that God has in store for us. So our hearts might not be in the right place. Our hearts are often more down here than they are up there, we can say, meaning that we're more wrapped up in this life than in the things of this world rather than focusing on the promises of the Lord. And so we become fearful about preserving our life down here. Our Lord does say something about preserving our lives in the gospel, but if we go into that, we'll just uh, digress way too much. So we'll try to stay on track here. We've said a number of times in different reflections that the word believe in the New Testament has a double meaning. For example, John 3, 16 famously says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. The word believe there in the Greek is pisteo. It means one to believe intellectually, so it does mean that. But it also means to trust Jesus and entrust ourselves to him. If I say that I believe in Jesus Christ, it means that not only do I accept in my mind that he is the Son of God, not only do I accept intellectually the teachings of the church, but it also means that I trust him with my life. Just as a side note, the word faith actually isn't in the Gospel of St. John. You look in the Gospel of St. John, you don't see the word faith. The apostle uses the word believe instead. What's the difference? Well, faith is a noun. Faith is a thing or an idea, as it were. Believe is a verb. It's actually an action. It's something I have to do. It's putting faith into action. Living by faith means that I trust God and I rely on him, not just that I believe in my head. So sometimes our fears can come from the fact that we do believe in our heads, but not really so much in our lives, in our actions, in our choices. And sometimes our fears can have from, uh, basically they can come from having a misplaced faith, meaning that one, we have something or someone at the center of our life that isn't the Lord, so that's a misplaced faith. And two, it could mean 
that our faith in God is just superficial if it's misplaced. Uh, when people say they're struggling in their faith or they no longer have faith in God or in the church, the reason is often because either their faith was misplaced in the first place or it just wasn't as solid as it's supposed to be. What are some examples of a misplaced faith? Well, we can pray and be faithful churchgoers and expect that we won't have a lot of difficulties in this life. That's a misplaced faith. Uh, why? Because Jesus said, in this world, you will have tribulations. You will have difficulties. He said in John 16, verse 33. He also said, take up your cross and follow me. Right? Matthew 16, 24. So difficulties shouldn't surprise us. Our faith is also misplaced when we're praying and hoping that God will do our will rather than being open to his will for us. In his agony, even Jesus himself prayed, Father, not my will, but yours be done. Luke 22, verse 42. Our faith is also misplaced if our primary focus is on physical health and material well-being rather than on spiritual health and well-being. Physical health, of course, is a good thing. Material possessions are as well, but the Lord always wants us to prioritize spiritual health first. Jesus even asks us, he says, what does it profit a man if he should gain the whole world and lose his own soul? He says, Mark 8, verse 36. So the good of our soul always has to be prioritized. So sometimes when addressing our fears, we need to first take a look at our faith and see if we're putting our faith in the right place and in the right things. And we also need to evaluate as well and ask ourselves, am I turning with confidence and trust to the Lord and asking him for help in my worries and my distress? Or am I turning to something or someone else? Or do I pray to God but Really, I don't trust him as I should. To say that we believe in Jesus Christ means that we trust in him. That's the whole point of the divine mercy image, or one of the big points of the message, Jesus, I trust in you. And lastly, we'll mention that just as at the center of the word pride is that letter I, right? P-R-I-D-E, so I am at the center when I'm prideful, so too. The center of the word trust is the opposite, right? It's you, T-R-U-S-T, meaning that I'm not called to trust in myself. I'm called to trust in you, Lord. If the Lord is at the center of our lives, then he will calm our fears. Let's take to heart the words of the Apostle Paul in Philippians 4, verses 6 and 7, when he says, have no anxiety about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Words of wisdom from the apostle who went through a lot of difficulties and a lot of distress. So may Our Lady Teach us how to move from fear to trust and how to always entrust our cares to the Lord. When I am afraid, says the psalmist, I will put my trust in you. Psalm 56, verse 3. Praise be Jesus and Mary. Amen.